Electronics factories are full of fascinating processes that power our daily lives. From the screens we watch, to the machines that keep industries moving, to the devices we use for personal care, and even the systems that keep us cool, today we're exploring how some of the most important electronics are made inside factories. Let's begin with the big screen. Here's how LED TVs are manufactured inside modern factories. The process behind each unit is a fascinating mix of advanced machinery, human precision, and clever engineering. It all starts with glass, two ultra-thin sheets of it to be exact. In a spotless clean room, one sheet is coated with millions of microscopic transistors that will control each pixel. The second sheet gets a color filter made of tiny red, green, and blue cells. A few drops of liquid crystal material are placed between them and the sheets are sealed together. This sandwich becomes the LCD panel, the heart of every LED TV. But light is what brings it all to life. LED strips are carefully installed along the edges of a clear plastic layer known as plexiglass. As the LEDs shine through, the plexiglass spreads the light evenly across the screen. Then, two special optical films are added to boost brightness and color clarity, making the picture look sharper and more vibrant. With the screen ready, it's time to build the body. Plastic casings are created using high-pressure injection molding machines. These sturdy frames come in different sizes, ready to hold the screen and all the electronics that make a TV smart. Now comes the real brain power. Every TV gets a main board, known as the SSB, and a power board. These small but powerful components control the image, sound, Wi-Fi connection, HDMI ports, and more. Thousands of tiny parts are placed onto the circuit boards by machines and then connected through wave soldering, a process that melts and fuses them without damaging the board. Once completed, the boards are installed inside the TV's body using robotic screwdrivers, which are carefully calibrated to avoid over-tightening. With the hardware in place, it's time to bring the TV to life. The factory uploads the necessary software and firmware to each unit, getting it ready for its first test run. The TVs are powered up and their screens are analyzed for color accuracy and defects. High sensitivity cameras scan every inch of the display, checking over 2 million pixels to make sure each one lights up correctly. Even the tiniest flaw is caught and fixed. Before a single TV leaves the facility, it goes through an extensive final quality check. For at least four hours, each unit is tested for screen brightness, response time, audio clarity, remote signal reception, and more. Engineers also test for long-term durability and performance under different conditions. Finally, the TV is ready for shipping. Each one is carefully packed by hand into a custom-designed cardboard box, then stacked on pallets and loaded onto trucks. From start to finish, the entire process takes less than a day, but the result is a powerful piece of home technology built to last for years. And that's how LED TVs are made. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look into the world of smart TV manufacturing, don't forget to like the video, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the channel for more factory deep dives from around the world. Next, we'll look at something small but powerful, bearings, the hidden heroes that keep machines running smoothly. It all starts with something simple, steel. But not just any steel. This is bearing steel, specially chosen because it's extremely hard, highly wear resistant, and tough enough to handle serious stress. First, it's heated to about 1100 degrees Celsius until it's glowing red hot, then cut into short, thick cylinders called blanks. These blanks go under a massive hydraulic press, which flattens them into a pancake-like shape. And a hole is punched right in the middle. From here, ring rolling and hole expansion fine-tune the size, getting it closer to what's needed for the specific type of bearing. Before machining with extreme precision, the rings are softened and stress relieved through annealing. Heated slowly to around 780 to 810 degrees Celsius, held for a couple of hours, and then cooled gradually to improve the metal structure.
The rings then move to rough machining, where the inner and outer diameters are cut close to final size, but with a little extra material left for perfect finishing later. Heat treatment comes next. Heating the rings to 830 to 860 degrees Celsius, the austenitizing temperature, then rapidly cooling them to form a super hard martensitic structure. To prevent brittleness, they are tempered at 150 to 200 degrees Celsius for a few hours, keeping the hardness but reducing internal stress. In the precision grinding stage, automated grinders bring the outer diameter, inner diameter, and flat surfaces to micrometer level accuracy ensuring perfect smoothness and alignment. Before assembly, every part is ultrasonically cleaned to remove oil, dust, and microscopic metal particles. High-grade steel balls are then placed between the inner and outer rings, and a cage is fitted to keep the balls evenly spaced for smooth rolling. Clearance is measured with extreme accuracy. The bearing is cleaned again, spin dried, and lubricated with grease to minimize friction and extend its lifespan. Finally, each bearing undergoes a high-speed vibration test, where low vibration means high manufacturing precision. Once it passes, the bearing is ready to power everything from massive industrial machines to tiny gadgets, quietly and efficiently. Now let's see how innovation meets hygiene. This is how electric toothbrushes are made in factories. It starts with the motor and PCB assembly, where robots combine copper coils, magnets, and printed circuit boards into precision vibration units. Each motor is tested instantly for speed and power, while controllers on PCBs are programmed for timing and charge settings. Next, plastic injection molding shapes the ergonomic handle. Heated polymer is formed into waterproof casing units designed to withstand daily moisture, often finished with grip-enhancing rubber overlays. Inside every handle, you'll find a lithium-ion battery and charging coil. Technicians embed these components with exact alignment, essential for seamless induction or contact-based charging every time the brush returns to its charging base. Over at the brush head assembly, nylon bristles are grouped, inserted, trimmed, and fitted into plastic heads. Each tuft of bristles is grouped precisely by machine and inserted at high speed. These are usually made of soft nylon, engineered to bend just enough to clean but not damage your gums. Models with sonic motion incorporate gear modules to vibrate the bristles at high frequency. Then comes final assembly and sealing. Ultrasonic welds or adhesives fuse brush head and handle, sealing out moisture and protecting the internal electronics. Human inspectors ensure every unit meets visual and functional standards. Even with automation, manual checks remain essential for quality control. Once all components are in place, the casing is sealed using ultrasonic welding, a method that uses high-frequency sound waves to bond plastic parts tightly without screws or glue. Each toothbrush undergoes quality control tests. Vibration speed, waterproofing, button response, and charging performance are all verified. Any unit not meeting standards is removed from the line for rework or recycling. Finally, the device is cleaned, packaged, and shipped. Boxes include extra heads, charging docks, and manuals. Labels and barcodes are applied before pallets are loaded for global distribution. By the time it reaches your bathroom, your electric toothbrush has passed through precise robotics, careful craftsmanship, and strict quality controls. 
ensuring every morning starts with a bright smile. And finally, we'll explore cooling technology at its best. Here's how air conditioners are manufactured step by step. Let's uncover how Daikin, Japan's number one AC brand, builds its powerful air conditioners from scratch. Let's begin. The birth of an AC. It all starts with plastic molding. The journey of every split air conditioner begins with precision plastic molding. Using high pressure injection machines, molten plastic is poured into detailed molds to form the outer casing, indoor grills, and fan blades. These parts aren't just for looks, they're engineered for durability, airflow efficiency, and noise reduction. The indoor unit's grill, frame, and fan components are made using precision molding machines. Every curve, vent, and blade is crafted with accuracy. Even the crossflow fan, the long rotating cylinder that pushes air into your room, is molded here. Engineering the heat exchanger. Next, we dive into the heart of the air conditioner, the heat exchanger. Copper tubes are bent into U-shapes, called hairpins, and inserted into layers of aluminum fins. Then, the entire structure is bent again to maximize airflow. Pipes called U-tubes are inserted to connect the flow. All connections are soldered, a process that requires both heat and expertise. Ultrasonic magic and precision. Now comes the ultrasonic welding process. Instead of glue or screws, these fans are welded together using high-frequency sound vibrations. It's clean, fast, and super strong, but it doesn't stop there. Each fan is balance tested by spinning it at high speeds to ensure it runs smoothly, no wobbles allowed. A dimensional inspection also confirms the fans meet exact size standards. After that, gas is sealed inside the system to test its pressure strength. Engineers carefully check for any leaks. Once confirmed, the gas is recovered for reuse. Then, a seal plate is installed to lock everything in. Assembly of the indoor unit. Now it's time for the indoor unit assembly. Sealing materials are attached, the crossflow fan and heat exchanger are mounted, and electrical components like circuit boards and sensors are installed. Another leakage test ensures safety and the front grill is snapped into place. Before leaving the station, the AC unit undergoes a high voltage test to ensure it's electrically safe. Then, engineers perform an operating inspection, basically turning it on to make sure it cools perfectly. The outdoor powerhouse. Let's move to the outdoor unit. The massive housing is shaped through press and paint processes. Followed by resin molding and the propeller fan molding. These large fans are crucial for heat dissipation. Assembly begins. A coupler is installed to connect indoor and outdoor units. Then comes putty for sealing and soundproofing materials are added around the compressor to reduce noise. The propeller fan and side plates are installed.
Just like before, the unit undergoes a withstand voltage test to ensure electrical safety. A final nameplate label is attached before packaging. Finally, both indoor and outdoor units are carefully packaged and prepared for shipment to homes across the globe. So the next time you feel that cool breeze from your Daikin AC, just remember the incredible engineering, testing, and precision that went into making it.